What is going on friends and welcome back to the Minecraft Hub channel. Now you may remember from a while back we did a season 1 tour of Zetacraft uh, and this is the season 2 tour of Zetacraft. Season 2 is now wrapping up. Uh, they've done an incredible job of doing a lot on this server in this amount of time. Uh, we're starting off here at the Zetacraft spawn. Now unfortunately the interior of this building didn't get finished, but the exterior did and it is absolutely massive as you can see here. This is kind of a recreation of the Denver Courthouse. That was the inspiration for this build here. I would have loved to see the inside done, but it is a massive, massive interior and there just wasn't time in the season. However, the back of this build is done, so that's more than some people can say. But this world is absolutely incredible. All the Zetas on this server did an amazing job of doing some really, really cool builds that we're going to explore in this world tour today. We're going to focus mainly on the bases. I'll do a quick fly over through the starter town and shopping districts just so you guys can get a look. But fortunately for you, there is a link to the world download down in the description below so you guys can actually fly around this world, check it out for yourself, see everything that's been built, and maybe even build some stuff in it for yourself as well. But here is the Zetacraft spawn. We just flew around the entire thing. Uh, this Christmas tree, of course, was for Christmas. Now let's go start checking out some bases. So this first one is the Dragon Egg Quest base. Now this was built by Mindless, and this base is absolutely incredible and so unique because it is actually an adventure map as well as being a mega base. So this portion right here is the massive uh, adventure map where you can actually find the dragon egg and get the dragon egg achievement for yourself. And the tower that you could see way off in the left when we uh, turned that way was where uh, the farms and kind of starter base for Mindless are located. But you can see this map is absolutely massive. There's guidebooks right at the front so when you do download this world you are able to get grab a guidebook figure out exactly what you're supposed to do. There's four different mazes. That's what we're standing on top of right now. I'm not going to show you guys the interior, so no spoilers there. But these are all mazes to get a certain key to get into the main portion of the mega base. Now what's really cool about all this as well is there's actually a huge underground portion to this mega base that houses a uh, recreation of the Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom set. It's really, really cool looking. We'll check it out here in a second. But it is a really cool replication of that. I just happened to watch the movies pretty recently. So when I saw that room, I was like, wow, this is actually really, really cool looking. And you'll notice these walls are not exactly straight either. We'll check out some maps of the entire Zetacraft world later on. And you'll get a bit better picture of all that. But it's really cool seeing all this from a sky view as well as just seeing all the details and everything that's been added into the actual build itself. And as you can see, this right here is what I was talking about with the Indiana Jones and the Temple of Dune recreation. This is the Temple of Kali Ma. And I think it's a really, really cool build. Next, we're gonna head over to the Flower Arena. So on the Zetacraft server, the Zetas actually decided to split up into factions at one point, supporting various flowers and even the cactus. The Wither Rose, the Cuddly Cacti, the Sunflowers, all of them present here, and each of them have their own base. This is the Cuddly Cacti, of course, uh, looking like the Millennium Falcon. And then down here is the actual Zetacraft Arena. This is a really cool build. You can see the scale of these uh, giant flower statues is massive and they have a bit of an interior for uh, a meeting room and things like that for each of the different factions. Next we're going to head over to Drop. Drop was a kind of conglomerate of Zetas that wanted to get together and then sell different items throughout the seasons. They had basically every farm you could think of. They're out in the ocean, kind of near this base. There's a raid farm, stone farm, wool farm. Every farm you could think of, it's probably out there. And all of that stuff was then brought back to this storage room here, completely automated storage room with a really cool uh, giant slime and honey block door. And there is also a combination lock to get into the main diamond vault here. I'd love to see if any of you are actually able to guess the combination here. I just tried clicking in a few numbers but didn't get anything unfortunately. I'm actually not even sure how long the combination is, but it's definitely going to be tough to get in there. 
This is another section of uh, the drop conglomerate space. This right here is a giant industrial crane. You can see the raid farm out that way. And then over here is kind of the harbor. And this was all built by Geek Squeak, Megateca, and the rest of the drop crew. Inside a lot of this harbor are various farms. I know there's a cactus farm, and I believe a gunpowder farm in here as well, if I'm remembering correctly. But this area not only looks incredible, also super useful. Over here, we have one of the map areas of the Zetacraft server. There's actually a couple different areas with uh, some of these maps, but I'll try to fly up here so we can get a look at them. These maps are absolutely ridiculous. I can't believe people are able to do this in Minecraft. These are built in 3D too, uh, to just add some different textures and colors and stuff to the map uh, that wouldn't be present if it were just 2D. And hopefully we can get up high enough here and yeah, you can see these maps are absolutely huge and incredible. And here's a look at some of them right here just to get a idea of what these actually look like once they're mapped out and placed around the shopping district, various bases and things like that. Next up, we're heading over to Diosil's base. Now over here, you can see a lot of the bedrock has been removed here. I believe Diosil said it was about 700 and something pieces of bedrock that had to be manually removed. And you can see there's been added coral, basalt, uh, black rock, everything down there. This area actually used to just have small pathways up to the portals, but it ended up claiming a lot of the Zetas lives, so they decided to just cover it over with that tinted glass. Now this is Diosil's Tower, otherwise known as the Obelisk. Uh, it goes by a few different names, and you can kind of see from uh, this distance here that there is a 500 written in gold blocks on the side of this tower. That was for when Diosil hit 500 subscribers, and I believe he is now at over a thousand subscribers, which is a huge jump, definitely a very successful Zetacraft Season 2. So let's go ahead and check out some of the floors of this tower. This thing is built all the way up to build height, and each floor has something different on it. Right here is the uh, Hanging Gardens of Babylon. They've been put into Minecraft here and you can see there's a few little surprises through here. If you open up some of uh, these hoppers, you might find some items. There's a hidden pumpkin in here. Uh, some of the floors of this build have farms. There's an iron farm on the bottom, which didn't end up getting used a whole lot because it produces a lot of iron very quickly. There's storage rooms, meeting rooms, and so much more in this tower. Next up, we have this base here, uh, nicknamed Solaris. This build is really, really cool. It's a massive castle built out of mostly different blue uh, cyan type blocks. Uh, and you can see once we go up a little bit why this is called Solaris. This was originally built uh, to be kind of like a sunflower for the flower wars that were happening on the server. Uh, but then Alex Plays MC decided to nickname it uh, Solaris just because it does look like a giant sun. Now this build is incredible. Obviously you can see that this island is completely uh, terraformed to the exact dimensions of what this castle needs. Uh, and you can see here there's different bridges, rooms, dungeons, and so much more throughout this entire thing. This is such a cool build and definitely gonna be a really fun one to explore in the world download, even though not much of the interior is actually done on this build. Now we're gonna go ahead and check out Bleeker's base. Now Bleeker absolutely hates building, but he did go ahead and build up some very cool things here. We can see we've got this house, uh, kind of like a farmhouse on the side over here that will go inside. There is absolutely no interior inside of it. All the storage is out on this land here. And then there are the giant farmlands that will fly over, which have been terraformed uh, to be completely flat and add a river through and everything. Now, a lot of Bleeker's builds are just completely story based. So you're definitely going to want to go and check out Bleeker's channel if you haven't already. Uh, go check out his channel, see what he's about. A lot of really fun videos, really, really funny too. Okay, now this is the farmland that I was talking about. You can see how everything's been terraformed here. This has all been harvested by hand at least once or twice throughout the season. And that's gonna definitely take a long, long time because this is some pretty massive fields of crops that we've got going here. Another part of Bleaker's base that I really liked was this wheat farm over here. This wheat farm, uh, if you don't recognize it, is one of the earliest automated wheat farms that you could make in Minecraft. 
the harvesting process, you just go ahead and hit a lever and it sends down a flood of water. And then you just pick everything up and plant everything by hand. But I really love seeing this farm on this server because this is a farm I haven't even seen in years. Next up, we have Backpack Streamers Base. Now this base is really cool. The block palette for this is just all over the place. It's got a really cool gradient from the bottom to the top, using that deep slate and everything down at the bottom, then moving all the way up to diorite and uh, those white blocks at the top before being capped off by wood. Now the inside of this is really cool looking as well. I really, really like the block palette and just everything that was used in here. It's definitely a lot, adds a lot of detail and really uniqueness to this build. Definitely a fun one on the server. Now, next up, we have Splashes and Puddles. Now, this base, Splashes actually did a couple bases on this server that are absolutely massive. This being one of them, you can see this thing is absolutely massive and really, really well built. It's just this geometric kind of lotus shape, uh, these flower petals, everything, a lot of different curves, angles, everything combined to make this really, really cool looking base. This is one of my favorite on the season. Uh, for sure just because of the different shapes angles everything that plays into this and it definitely uh, Took a while for splashes to design now this base goes by a few different names either lotus the flower things like that But this is the interior. It's complete with storage room trading hall Everything you need inside of your minecraft base of course a portal to get in and out very quickly but this base is really really cool just for all the geometric shapes that play into designing this entire thing. Uh, it's really, really impressive overall. Now just above the starter town, Splash has built another build. This airship right here is just insane to me. You can see the scale of it is massive. I'm flying through this whole thing uh, with no problem. Another really cool feature of it is that all these trap doors and everything uh, that are used to build it actually let light through. So the light on the ground is very minimally disrupted from what it could be if this entire thing was just built out of blocks. Uh, so you're not getting a whole lot of mob spawns on the ground like you normally would with a base of this size way up in the air. But this build is really impressive as well. You can obviously the scale of it as we fly around, but all the detail and everything uh, as you're going through here is really impressive as well. You can see all the string over here. This thing's completely spawn proof. Uh, but we'll go ahead, drop down inside and see some of the details because this thing is really, really cool looking. Now the inside of the space has a few different things inside of it. Of course, a storage room. Uh, but one of my favorite parts about the inside here is this map room over here. Now this map room has a few different sizes of some of the same maps and some more specific maps but you can see a lot of the bases throughout the Zetacraft server on this map right here. Giant terraformed mountains, huge bases out on the ocean, the airship of course on this table here. Uh, you can see the airship and uh, the mountain at the bottom left hand corner and that one was Skyrim. And then that is of course the lotus or the flower that we just went over and toured. And then this is just some of the other areas throughout the world. Now the maps of the Zetacraft server, I have to say, are really, really cool looking. I'll post some at the end of the video. Uh, there's just so many cool aerial shots of different builds throughout the server that you guys definitely need to see. Next up, we have Maya Quest. And if you remember Maya Quest from season one of Zetacraft That World Tour, or if you watch Zetacraft yourself, then you'll remember Maya Quest is an incredible builder and does a lot, a lot of really cool builds, designs, everything like that. So this is just the nether portal to get to Maya Quest base. This giant three-tailed fox statue right here and a pretty cool looking nether portal as well. But Maya Quest went ahead and built the Mudlands this season. Now the Mud Kingdom is so cool looking because it's got a lot of different builds. Uh, some things you'll recognize like Fifi Destroyer from Hermitcraft or a giant statue of Maya's skin. Also some Halloween things. But this Mud Kingdom is kind of a kingdom that's been sinking in the mud. Now you can see different towers, statues, things like that, the giant clock tower. All of that kind of sunk into the ground and this entire biome basically transformed to make it a giant mud biome, which is just impressive enough as itself. 
But this build is so cool looking. Not only is it absolutely massive, but just the idea of these giant builds sinking down into the mud is really cool to me. And also seeing these giant custom trees, even Fifi the Destroyer being brought into this server is just a lot of fun. And this entire build is actually built above an ancient city. So if you head down the giant stairway that's in that temple, you can actually find yourself in an ancient city. Next up, we have Dark Witch. Now this is just the portal area to get to Dark Witch's base. Dark Witch built a really, really cool fairy kingdom this season. We'll get a really good aerial view of this whole thing because it is absolutely massive. There's so many different blocks, custom trees, giant custom mushrooms, flying dragonflies. This area is absolutely beautiful. I also am currently using the complementary shaders, which really adds to just the lighting and effects of all this as well. Uh, but this base was really, really cool. I love seeing all these custom trees and especially all this amethyst and everything that we've got over in these mushrooms here. These mushrooms are also built up uh, with stained glass, which I think is a really great idea gives it kind of a more magical effect and then you can see all the other amethyst and those types of blocks in that area as well and then down there was the actual build that dark witch uh, had the storage room and everything else for the season inside of next up we have guru mt's round base here fly up to get an aerial view of this one as well this thing is so so cool uh, this guru actually had a build every single episode of the season and you can see there's different quadrants to this entire uh, build, build section that we've got here. Uh, in each different quadrant there's a different block palette that was mainly used for all of those builds which I think is a really cool idea. Really gives a unifying feel to each quadrant and even the whole circle. But you can see even outside of the circle there's a lot of different houses and builds, towers, things like that. This is such a cool area and everything has a completed interior and a really detailed story as well. So if you go and check out Guru's channel, you can definitely see more of the thought process that went into each of these builds, these stories, the interiors, everything like that. I highly recommend it because they are so cool. And some of them you'll find farms and some of them you'll find just really nice looking interiors. So definitely worth going to check out. And this should be a lot of fun to explore all the different builds and things like that in the world download, which you can see in the description down below. Now this next area was actually built by a few of the different Zetas. This area was used for a build contest. So you'll see a lot of different styles of builds. That's because a lot of different builders were in this area working on different projects. So there's a lot of really cool things you can find while looking through these. That tower that I was just looking at was built by Time Architect. And you can see it's kind of got this blue energy seeping through it. There's actually a blue heart on the inside, uh, just kind of pumping out with the crying obsidian, things like that. And it just looks so cool and has a really nice story behind it as well. Next up, we've got Hypnojo. Now Hypnojo built this town over here. And this starts off right with the love bridge. Now there was some other plans Hypnojo had to build up on the mountain and that's why his nether portal is up there. But down here we can see the entire village that Hypnojo ended up building. And this bridge has a funny story behind it. The hearts were actually completely accidental, but then once it was there, you just gotta call it the love bridge because it looks so perfect. Now this whole village is absolutely run by villagers. So you'll find different farms uh, and different villagers that you can actually trade with and everything throughout. And it all looks really cool. A lot of really nice details to it and definitely a really fun village area. Next up, checking out Boss Builds MC. This build over here is so cool looking. And if you've ever seen Spirited Away, which is a Studio Ghibli movie, you may recognize this as the bathhouse. I unfortunately have not seen Spirited Away yet, so I can't attest to that, but this thing still looks amazing without even having seen that movie yet. This thing is absolutely massive and really, really cool looking with so many different details and small just things throughout the entirety of the build. 
I'm sure if you're a fan of the movie, you'll recognize a lot of different uh, details or small important things throughout this. But as somebody who's just seeing this as a Minecraft build, I still absolutely love it. The custom trees, you can see there's a cherry blossom tree before cherry blossoms existed in Minecraft. And there's just so many small little things throughout this massive build that just bring the whole thing together. It's obviously got that Japanese style uh, behind it with the curved roof, the different woods and everything like that but it all looks so nice and is such a cool build and actually makes me really want to go and watch Spirited Away so I can actually see the inspiration behind this entire build. Next up, we have the world of Skyrim built in Minecraft. This was done by Ricky and Time Architect. Uh, I didn't include the footage from the actual server tour in here because I didn't have the hat packs installed at the time. So I went ahead and installed that just so we could have a few more of the custom blocks available here. Uh, but you can see this is a really, really cool uh, build of Skyrim here. We've got the <laughs> giant dragon Alduin who I just slammed into his face here. This has a full skeleton. So if you were to remove all other blocks, the skeleton would still remain. And it's got a trading hall on the inside as well, which I think is super cool looking. There's also a villager breeder down at the back end of it. And if we fly back down outside of the dragon's mouth, we'll be able to find this huge village here. Uh, it's got things like a Jarl house, uh, a blacksmith, a wood shop, and so much more. We'll actually fly over here uh, because my character, uh, my Minecraft skin, is actually present in this world. I was uh, a part of ZetaCraft Season 2 for a little while, but unfortunately didn't have time to continue. But I still made it into the Skyrim world at the sawmill, carrying a log over here. So we can also fly up to this mountain up here. You may have not noticed yet, but this mountain is entirely custom built. This was uh, just one of those mountains that kind of has a huge bowl shape at the top and Ricky and Time Architect went ahead and transformed this thing into High Hrothgar. And this actually features a few different locations from Skyrim. Over here, uh, you may recognize this is the Bard's Leap quest from Skyrim. Uh, it's also got the, I believe, Forsworn encampment behind it. I think that's what they're called. Might be Forsake, something like that. Uh, I haven't played the game in quite a while, but it is one of my favorites of all time, so I really love seeing all these builds here. But the inside of the mount is also a huge base as well, or a huge recreation of what a Skyrim mountain would look like on the inside. Because in here we have kind of like this grotto area, everything's overgrown. Uh, and you can advance through this area and down here you'll find this door which unfortunately is open right here but we'll go ahead and use this button to close it up this is supposed to be one of those doors where you have to use the dragon claw to get into and once you're into that this could be where like the boss fight and everything happens is uh, and there's of course the word wall at the back but I think Ricky and Time Architect did such a good job of recreating so many Skyrim moments in Minecraft. Everything here looks so amazing. And some of you may remember their word wall shop from the beginning of the season. But if we go ahead and head down here, this is kind of like where we can go to find the Dwimmer section of the build and this giant grotto. Uh, they did a ton of work and you'll actually be able to see the inside of the mountain and kind of the scale of it in this area over here. So just through this hallway and everything, you can see all the copper, the deep slate and everything. It opens up into this huge cave where this is kind of like the massive grotto Dwimmer area that you may find in Skyrim. I think they did such a cool job of recreating everything. I absolutely love this build. It's definitely one of my favorites of the season because it is just so massive and it looks so good compared to the actual game. And also there's a little hole at the top so we can fly out of this mountain just right here. And then you can see we are back into the world of Skyrim and the Zetacraft server. So this video focused mainly on bases, but we'll go ahead and fly through the starter town here and the shopping district in a second, just so you guys can get a glimpse of what they look like. We did some tours earlier on in the Zetacraft season uh, where we showed off the starter town and shopping district, but they have definitely transformed a bit since we did that. 
but just so you guys can see the areas here these things look incredible there's so many different bases that base right there was the hall of remembrance kind of like a museum that geek squeak built at the end of the zeta craft season then over here is the shopping district so many different shops the giant pig right there is the shop that i built when i was a part of the season earlier on it was hogs and logs and they sold logs and then we can see there are so many other shops a giant rocket in the sky to sell fireworks a dragon in a word wall to sell enchanted books and so much more this season was so cool the zetas all did such an incredible job building so many different things they all had their own projects projects they worked on together it all came into this incredible world that we are looking at now but anyways guys the world download is in the description below if you guys want to tour it for yourself i highly recommend you do we showed basically a portion of what this entire world truly is but anyways guys thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed this video be sure to drop a like on it and if you're new to our channel hit that subscribe button as well but anyways guys thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time